Jordan, I have a question, Bob Sink. Yes, Bob. Could you, um, you've written about the layers of tension around the chakras. Could you talk about that? Only if you'll give me permission to take a little drink of water. <laughs> okay, thank you. Excuse me one second, please. You know, it's a subject I talk about a lot, Bob. Over the years, especially the heart chakra, people build up walls of defense. You know, people have been hurt in life. They've been raised, abused, and this and that and the other. And over time, we unconsciously, you know, build up this fortress around the heart center thinking that it's going to protect us against life, and it doesn't. The only thing it does is makes it infinitely more difficult for us to open the heart chakra and truly experience unconditional love inside ourselves. So this is, you know, this is very common. You know, I mean, I, I know when I have retreats or I have people here on Saturdays and I do this hands-on work, I touch somebody, just about everybody, between the shoulder blades. I mean, they literally almost bounce across the room. There's an explosion of energy inside them. And it's breaking down their resistance. It's breaking down that, you know, the walls of Jericho that have been built around this sacred place called the heart. And they're built there because people are afraid. They, they don't trust. They don't, they've been hurt a lot in life. So it's very common for people to, you know, live like that. You know, I always kid around and say I I teach, I do kundalini cardiology, you know, because in many ways it's true, having to open the heart. Nobody is going to be enlightened if the heart chakra is not open. Nobody is going to be enlightened if they don't finally trust life to be their teacher. Life is sacred. It has an infinite amount to teach us about how to grow inside ourselves, how to open, how to really build a system inside that can connect us with higher energy in the universe. The heart chakra is one of the key elements, you know, because the ultimate step in any kind of spiritual evolution is love. It's love, you know, and if the heart chakra is like the walls of Jericho, you know, you're going to have to send Joshua in there to break them down, you know, because they have to be broken down. That fortress has to be dismantled inside a person. People have that in their heads. They spend so much time thinking and analyzing and trying to figure out a world that it's impossible to figure out. And, you know, they create these barriers there where they can never really focus the attention of the mind, you know, that energy of mind in the chakra below the navel and use it to open the very core of their being. And it's the same thing with that chakra below the navel, you know. There's so much imbalance inside people, lack of foundation, people that have swept away and you know, tsunamis of tension and this and that. And it's only it only exists because they there's some there's such an enormous fortress there that again it has to be broken down, it has to be surrendered, one has to go deep enough inside themselves to be able to build that kind of foundation and that kind of harmony. Please uh I don't know your name, but sit up and do the meditation while I teach a talk. You know, uh, I promise you, every word will go inside you. You don't have to listen. <laughs> yeah. So just sit up and do the meditation. So do you understand what I'm talking about? This is really important stuff because everybody has this kind of resistance. I am up against this with everyone who studies with me. 
and the job is to help them to get past themselves. I always say the only reason that nobody is you know, spiritually enlightened is it's not because of the society and the economy and the, you know, all the things that go on in the world. It's because of themselves. And once we can get past all of those fortresses and walls that we build inside, and we said it's we get open, the heart is open, we learn unconditional love, we learn how not to be afraid to love, how not to be afraid to be compassionate, how not to afraid be afraid to be kind to other people, and how not to be afraid to live here on the highest level of what it means to be human. It's the same way with the you know chakra below the navel. You know, once we master that, once we can keep our attention focused there, and that chakra begins to develop inside, you know, we build foundation. We have a root system inside ourselves that's strong enough to deal with any kind of bullshit that goes on in the world. Sexual energy is another one. I mean, it's one of the most repressed places inside of people. And once we master that flow of energy that can move through the sexual area, you know, we'll activate Kundalini. Kundalini is pathway to God, to enlightenment. So each chakra has its fortress. <laughs> and, and the incredible you know, thing about this meditation is that it was developed to help break down those barriers those walls inside a person that are keeping them from being grounded, you know, having balance, developing chi inside themselves, from having their hearts open, from having quiet minds, from being able to use sexual energy as a way of activating Kundalini. I mean, sexual energy is the place of rebirth. It's the union of the yin-yang, the male-female, takes place in the sexual chakra. And that union will activate, gives birth to Kundalini. All of these areas are heavily guarded areas by each and every person, you know? And they have to be dismantled. They have to be broken down. We have to get free of ourselves so that we can finally experience the deepest elements of ourselves. And then we're, we're literally living with a different person. There isn't all the tension, there isn't all the anxiety, the fear, the guilt the, that so damages people. You know, and we build all of these structures inside to protect ourselves from these things, but they don't. They just make it worse. The best protection in a human being is being open. And I've learned this in my own life by so many experiences I've been through, where I just learned to keep my mouth shut and listen and let the energy exhaust itself in a difficult situation. And then move on in life, you know, without having to get into a fight and arguing and draining my whole life force out of me in order to prove to somebody else that I'm righter than they are. Who cares? In the ultimate scheme of things, it really doesn't matter. I mean, let people be right. I mean, that's their problem. It's not your problem, not my problem. Let people, let life be one's teacher. It is an extraordinary guru, life. It's been around a lot longer than any of us, and it has so much to teach us, but we have to allow it to teach us. We have to trust life. You're not going to trust life unless you build a system inside that's strong enough to do it. And that's what meditation is for. As I say all the time, that's all it's for. 
this is not a religion, it's not a cult, it's not a anything of that nature. It's a craft that one learns in order to build an inner life that's strong enough so they can arrive at a place where they can trust life, where they can live with unconditional love, where they can have compassion and kindness. And, and their activity in the world reveals this. You know, it lets you know how profound, you know, your meditation practice has gone inside yourself. So all those layers, you know, it, the best metaphor is an artichoke. You know, you got to peel so many layers of an artichoke to get to the heart. An onion, you got to peel all those layers of an onion. Mount Meru, you know, in Tibetan Buddhism, you know, the center of the earth, the center of the world universe is Mount Meru in their mythology. And Mount Meru is like a 60,000 foot mountain at the center of the universe. And around it, there's a 30,000 wide ocean. And then there's another mountain range that's half that, half that, half that, 13 times. You know, and then there are millions of these little cosmologies flowing through the universe. And all of us are exactly like that. <clears throat> and all we really want to do is get to the heart. Get to the foundation. Get to the real knowledge. If the mind is quiet, you get real knowledge that comes from energy that is infinite in the universe not from the intellect, not from some rational, you know, being that we become, but from higher creative energy, from the source of all energy, we can receive that knowledge. But the mind has to be quiet. I mean, you can always have a good laugh at yourself. That's really the best part of it. Does anyone else have a question they would like to ask? And, you know, look, everybody has the situation. There's nobody that lives in some isolated world where they don't have tension, you know? They don't have some kind of structures in themselves and barriers that they have to get past. <laughs> it's a universal pandemic. It's an endemic. You know, it's something that affects everyone that's alive. And the answer is simple. It's finding out how to do it. When I met Rudy and he showed me how to do it, man, I said, I, I said, this is the greatest miracle that's ever happened to me. Because up until that point, I didn't know how to get my mind quiet, my emotions quiet. I didn't know how to get grounded inside. I didn't even know what the hell grounded inside meant, you know? And I met this person who suddenly showed me an exercise that did this. I said, Jesus, Stuart, you've been looking for this all your life. Because so I used to sit with all kinds of yogis and rabbis and, you know, swamis and this one and that one. And, and the question I always had to them is, how do I get my mind quiet? You know, and I never got an answer. Well, I met Rudy. Bring your mind to the chakra below the navel. Learn to master that energy. Use it to build the very core of your being. Ground yourself. That'll allow the heart to open. That'll allow the mind to get quiet. 
that will allow the sexual energy to be used consciously, and that'll allow the kundalini, you know, to rise to the crown chakra. And above everything else, that'll help you to live here like a human being. But I knew even before I met you, Rudy, spiritual life is not going to take place until I learn how to live here like a human being. Well, I get rid of all my fear, my guilt, my anxiety, all the tension that used to rack my system, the neurosis, everything I had to get rid of. It was, as Rudy said, a deepest sense of surrender. Surrendering everything, all of that stuff, all of those blocks that are keeping one from doing what they were born here to do, and that's to simply be a happy person. Does anyone else have a question? Stuart, can I ask a question? Yeah, of course, yes. That's why I asked if anyone had a question. <laughs> Please. Um, I feel like during meditation after, I just feel very intense pain in my head, like forehead, and I don't know what to do about it or... What does that entail? Hisham, a very simple answer to that. If you open your heart, please stop moving. And, and if you open your heart, if you feel gratitude deeply in your heart, that pain is going to go away. It's not the head, it's the heart. If you open your heart, it makes room for all of that tension up here to begin to flow down. And that's the answer. I've I've seen it with so many people. I've had people come to me with headaches and migraines, and I do this work with them and open their hearts, and it goes away. It just goes away. I always kid around. It's like the plumbing. When the plumbing is stuffed up in the sink, everything comes out the kitchen sink because the pipes are stuffed up. Everything goes up to the head because the heart is in open. When the heart opens, it flows. Thank you. You're welcome. Does anyone else have a question? I mean, it takes time to do all these things. You know, you have to have patience with yourself and understand that one has to build a system inside that really has the capacity to do these things. And that's what these classes are all about to build that kind of system inside. Does anyone else have a question? Okay. All right. Thank you, all of you. God bless you all. And it's a great joy to come here and see every one of you and see people who are willing to spend an hour, you know, on a Wednesday evening, a Wednesday afternoon, working on themselves in depth. So thank you. And God bless you all. As I tell you all the time, you all are my teacher. Everybody needs a teacher. <laughs> And I come here to learn and I come here to grow and I come here to develop myself so I can have connection with God, do my service in the world. So thank you. God bless you all. There'll be a class tomorrow evening. I'm looking forward to seeing everyone. Thank you, Stuart. Thank you, Stuart. Thank you, Stuart. Good night. Good night. <clears throat>